This is the first section of chapter three on further centers of mass. And this section is about using calculus to find the centers of mass. And we're gonna start off by going through the proof before we go through the equations. So we're gonna start by imagining we want to find the center of mass of this shape here. Let's say that we want to find the center of mass between these two points we'll call this point here a and this point here b so we basically want to work out what's the center of mass of this shape here and the way we're going to do it is we're going to divide the shape up into strips like this each of these strips here we're going to call an elemental strip so elemental strip and that strip is going to have a height of y and a width of delta x. So that's going to be the width of each one of these elemental strips. So that means that the area of one of these elemental strips is basically the width times the height. And that's going to be delta x y or y delta x. Now, there's a couple of things uh, that we need to say about this strip. Now, first of all, we're going to assume that the strip, the sentimental elemental strip here, is of uniform density. So the density throughout this strip is the same. And we're going to use the Greek letter O, uh, sorry, rho, to stand for the density. And its units are mass per unit area. So mass per unit area so we are assuming that the um, it's got uniform density throughout and as the width of this delta x tends to zero then we can say that the center of mass of the strip is going to be half y because we're going to get this really really thin strip so basically we can say right halfway up at the point half y up that's where we're going to have our center of mass now we go before we go on to use calculus uh, just a little bit about how this rho value fits into what we know so in three dimensions we have mass density and volume so density is mass over volume or you could say mass equals density times volume when we move to a two-dimensional shape like a laminar where we're ignoring its width then we have mass area and then we have rho here, mass per unit area. So it's similar to density, mass per unit volume. Here, rho is mass per unit area. So we can say from this that mass is equal to rho times area. It's a bit like in three dimension, we would say mass is equal to density times volume. So now let's think about how we're going to find the mass or the center of mass of combined of all of these elemental strips. So we can use this formula here, which we've used before to find the center of mass in the X direction. So what we're doing is we're saying, right, okay, what is the mass and the center of mass of each of these strips? And we want to find the sum of those, right? So let's start. So we want the sum of the mass of each one of these uh, elemental strips so that's going to be rho times the area so I'm writing like this rho times by the area of the strip now we work that out down here so I'm going to write it as uh, y delta x times by the center of mass in the x direction of each one of these elemental strips and that's just going to be x and I want to divide that by the sum of the masses. In other words, the sum of the areas or the masses of each one of these elemental strips. So that's going to be the sum of rho times by y delta x. So that's going to be the sum of all of the masses. So I can tidy this up because I don't need the, the time sign. So I can write this as the sum of rho um, x y delta x over the sum of rho 
y delta x and what we're interested in is what's the limit as x tends to zero so as x tends to zero these summation signs become integration signs and the delta x becomes dx now remember we're trying to find the sum of these at strips between the values of a and b so what we have for x bar is the uh, integral between a and b and then we have rho xy dx so our delta x becomes dx divided by uh, the integral between a and b of rho y delta x so this is the formula that's going to give us the center of mass in the x direction our rho is a constant so the constant could go to the other side of the integral sign and you'll see that the row cancels out but I like to leave my row in my working and cancel it out at the end you could do your working without the row knowing that they cancel out but uh, when I do my examples I will be using row throughout and then cancelling out at the end and what you should also notice is this part down here is just the area of this 2d shape that you're trying to find the center of mass of so this is just the error of the shape now if it's an easy shape just write down the area you don't need to do integration let's say if it's a triangle or a, a semicircle or something like that and we know the area that can just go down here so we'll just write down that this bit here is just the area and then to work out the part of the top we're going to take the equation of the curve or whatever shape it is we're going to times it by x and then integrate it so we're now going to do the same uh, and find a center of mass in the y direction now this time uh, we have the mass of the elemental strip but we said the center of mass of each of these elemental strips is half y so this is going to get times by half y last time we got times by x because that was the center of mass of the elemental strip in the x direction so the top is going to be slightly different the bottom will be the same um, because again what we're doing is we're just finding the total area of all of these elemental strips or the total mass of the elemental strips so if we simplify it uh, we get this expression here and again what we want to find is what's the limit as delta x tends to zero so just like before the summations turn into integral signs between limits of a and b and we're going to be left with half rho y squared dx over same bottom part as we had before the mass of the um, this area here basically the area times by rho and again half is a constant that could be brought to the other side of the integral sign and um, also the rows will cancel out um, but as i said i will leave my rows in my working if you check mark schemes um, oft, often you'll find a working doesn't include rows so they'd, they'd accept either working because as i said it does cancel out at this point now i call this method actually finding the center of mass from first principles where you talk about uh, elemental strips and delta x and as delta x tends to zero um, and in some questions you can just go straight to the formula and use this to work out the center of mass unless the question asks you to prove that the center of mass is at a certain point or you're starting from scratch or you're proving a, a general result um, but now what we're going to look at is uh, shapes which are different to this where we've got like sectors uh, things like that and we need to find the center of mass of those a slightly different method okay so here's an example of the type of question we might get where we need to maybe prove where the center of mass of this sector is and we don't split it up into strips we split it up into triangles I suppose like elemental triangles so this is a larger version of the triangle where the vertex here of the triangle is at O and um, you could say well it's approximately a triangle shape as we make the smaller as delta theta tends to zero so yeah approximately a triangle and the center of mass of this triangle 
at this point here is going to be of a distance two thirds r from o so this length here is r this length here is r and this distance here is two thirds r and in a similar way to what we did before we can say right let's find the sum um, of each of the masses of each of these triangles times by its center of mass divided by the total mass of the shape and we can find the mass of the shape basically by working out the area of the sector and um, times in it by uh, rho to turn into a mass and then lastly before we get on to these examples we'll look at how we find the center of mass between two curves between two graphs where the upper curve what I'll call the top curve is f of x and the bottom one is what I call g of x between these limits of a and b so we'll start off by finding x bar this is the formula here now it may look a bit on the complicated side but basically what we're doing is we're taking the y that was would have been here before and replacing it with the top function minus the bottom or the top equation minus the bottom so top minus bottom and where y was here before you replace it with this and then we do the same at the, the bottom here this would have been row y so it's row top minus bottom now we look at y bar so uh, again applying the same type of rules uh, at the bottom here we'll start with this bit first so y was here before top minus the bottom now before we would have had y squared here so notice we do the top one squared minus the bottom one squared so we square first before we subtract so you don't do f of x minus g of, g of x and square that okay so square each of the two functions then subtract and then this will give you the y direction or the y distance of the center of mass from the origin uh, using this uh, formula here example one we're going to use calculus to find the position of the center of mass of a right angle triangle opq so this triangle here with base d and height h now it says use calculus so we don't just use the standard result for the center of mass of a triangle we use our calculus rule so we'll start by writing down how we find uh, x bar so that's going to be this formula so um, you may decide not to use rho i'm just going to use rho throughout and then cancel it down but this is a formula that we need so what do we need we need limits so limits are going to be zero and d we need y that is the equation of the uh, line or curve that bounds the shape and this is bounded by this line here so we know it's going to be y equals mx plus c c is zero and the gradient of this line is going to be h over d it's rise over its run so y equals h over d x is y and then remember this part of the bottom is the mass it's the area times by rho now we don't need to use integration to find this area it's easy it's a triangle isn't it so the area of this is going to be half the base d times the height so half dh is the area times that row, row to get the mass right so the top between zero and d we're going to have rho x times by y and that is h over dx that's going to be integrated with respect to x and then the bottom the mass is a half rho dh okay so from there we can uh, simplify the top before we integrate it so stick all my constants at the beginning so rho hd x squared dx over a half dh i mean uh, rho dh i mean at this point i could move all my constants across and cancel them down but i'll leave that to the end so integrating the top i'm going to get a third rho h over d x cubed between zero and d all over a half rho dh so let's substitute in the d and the zero well the d will give us one third rho 
h over d times by d cubed and then the zero is just going to give us zero and then a half rho dh right now this is where i'm going to do my cancelling down now a third divided by a half is two thirds my rows cancel out my h's cancel out this d is going to cancel out to make this d squared and then this d will cancel out that just become d so all i'm left with is two third d so i'll highlight this this is x bar so now we'll do y bar so again we'll start with the formula so limits of a and b so this time it's a half row uh, y squared dx all over the mass so row y dx now this bottom part is always going to be the same for x bar and y bar it's just going to be the mass of the shape and you're going to uh, work it out in one part so we don't need to work it out again so the bottom is just going to be a half row dh that's the mass of our triangle. And then the top here, our limits are going to be 0 and D, same as before. And then um, what we need to do, let's put a half here, half row. And Y squared is going to be this squared. So that's going to be H squared over D squared, X squared, DX. Okay, so I think we're in a position now where we can integrate this. So uh, we'll have a third x cubed. So a third times a half, that's going to be one six. So we'll have one six rho times by h squared over d squared x cubed. Um, all over, let's put down our limits. So zero and d all over a mass half rho dh so we only need to substitute in a d because um, zero is just going to be zero so we've got one six i'll say one six and then a right half one six rho times by h squared over d squared times by d cubed there's our substitution all over a half rho dh so now we'll do our cancelling down now um let's do it over here so one six divided by a half is going to leave us with one third uh my rows cancel out this d squared is going to cancel out leave this as d then that d is going to cancel out with this d and then h is going to cancel out with h we're just leaving h so all we're left with is one third h so this is y bar so just highlight this so that leaves our center of mass as the coordinate two third d one third h and this matches up with the formula that we know to find the center of mass of a uh, of a triangle and remember what we do we can add the y coordinates together divide by three add the x coordinates together divide by three and then that will give us the same result so we'll do that just to check so if we add the x coordinates together so that's zero plus d plus d so that's 2d divide that by three that's two thirds d and then we'll add the y coordinates together that's zero plus zero plus h and that's h divided by three a third h same result but here we're proving it by calculus we can't just write down uh, this and expect to get any marks at all example two find the coordinates of the center of mass of the uniform lamina bounded by the curve this curve here uh, with the equation 4 minus x squared, the x-axis and the y-axis as shown. So I'll start by writing down the formulas that we're going to use and we'll start to fill these in. So um, first of all, we need to know what y is. Well, y is 
this 4 minus x squared. We need to know the limits. Well, one of the limits is 0, and we need to know this limit here. So a is equal to 0. So this limit we're going to find when y is equal to 0. In other words, when 4 minus x squared equals 0, that gives x squared equals 4. So x is plus or minus 2, and we can see that x needs to be plus 2. So that gives our b limit as 2. So now we'll just substitute that information into our formula. So we'll start with x bar. So we're integrating between 0 and 2 and x times by y. So that's x times by 4 minus x squared dx all over. Now this one we don't know the error of, so we do need to integrate uh, 4 minus x squared between 0 and 2. OK, so let's uh, expand the brackets. So at the top we will have uh, 4x minus x cubed dx x cubed not x squared bottom that's not going to change and the next thing we're going to do is actually integrate so the top okay so that's going to be uh, 4x squared over 2 so that'll be 2x squared and then we'll have a quarter, minus a quarter x to the power of 4, 0 and 2. And then the bottom is going to be 4x minus um, a half, uh, sorry, no, a third x cubed. And that's between 0 and 2. So we'll evaluate that and see what we get. Uh, now we don't need to put the zero in because it's just going to be zero. So we've basically got two times by two squared, two times by four, which is eight minus two to the power of four is going to be 16. So we've got uh, minus a quarter of 16. So we're minusing four. And then the bottom, we will have uh, four times two, which is eight. And then here, minus a third of 2 cubed, so minus 8 over 3. And that becomes 3 quarters. So I'm going to highlight that because that's my x bar. So now we're going to do the same with y bar. And uh, we can just put everything into the formula. So same limits, uh, but this time it's half times by y squared. So that's going to be 4 minus x squared squared dx now the bottom is going to be the same now i'll write the whole thing out here but i know that the bottom is basically going to be 8 minus 8 over 3 so uh, i'll just write that down after i've written down the working here so 4 minus x squared dx expanding the top we will have a half of 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the power of 4 and then I'll put down the actual area at the bottom so 8 minus 8 over 3 and I'll simplify that and then um, integrate it so I will have um, 8x or sorry 8 minus 4x squared uh, plus half x to the power of 4 over this 8 minus 8 over 3. I'll carry on the working down here. Now I'm just going to carry on the working for the top down here due to lack of space. So that becomes integrating 8x minus 4 over 3x cubed uh, plus, now we're going to have a half times a fifth, so 1 tenth x to the power of 5 between 0 and 2. So we only need to put the 2 in, uh, not the 0, because the 0 won't make any difference. So here we're going to have 8 times by 2, which is 16. 16, uh, then minus 8 to cubed, uh, 4 thirds of 8. 
So that's 32 over 3. And then uh, 1 tenth of 2 to the power of 5. Now 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So we'll be uh, adding 32 over 10. That gives us 1, 2, 8 over 15. And I'll carry on over here. So Y bar is going to be, uh, we just evaluated the top, 1, 2, 8 over 15 divided by the bottom which is 8 minus 8 over 3 and that gives us 8 over 5 so 8 over 5 is our y bar so I'm just going to write the center of mass as a coordinate I'll do it up here so center of mass is going to be this distance from the origin 3 quarters comma 8 over 5 and that will be our whoops I'll point highlight in black that will be our answer for the center of mass of that example 3 a uniform semicircular lamina has radius r find the position of its center of mass now with a semicircle we've got two ways of doing it we can do it by using the elemental strip method so this is like first principles we're working out from from scratch so this question you would get zero marks if you just quoted the formula for um, the center of mass it does say find so any question that says find or prove anything like that it's first principles method so yeah we can use an elemental strip or what i'm going to call uh, elemental triangle now I'm going to use this method here, but you're also going to see this method again when we find the center of mass of a sector. And if we think about it, a sector is just a special form or a semicircle is just a special type of sector. Now you can do that with um, uh, a semicircle. You can use the elemental strip or the elemental triangle method, but with a sector, you can only use the elemental triangle method. We can't use the elemental strip method. And maybe when I do that, I'll show you why it doesn't work. And we have to use this elemental triangle method. OK, so let's start by drawing this out. So here's my semicircle. I'm starting off with the elemental strip method. So here's my elemental strip here. And we give this a width of delta x. And we're sort of wants to see what happens. What's the limit as delta x tends to zero? And we know that's going to lead to an integration. Now let's decide whether we need to find x bar and y bar. Well, yes, we need to find a center of mass in the x direction. But by symmetry, the center of mass in the y direction is zero. So we can just state that. We don't need to work it out. So we can say by symmetry, the center of mass in the y direction y bar is equal to zero so here's our formula to find the center of mass in the x direction and let's think about what we need so we need limits a and b so they're going to be zero and because this has a radius r uh, the other limit is going to be um, r so i'll just write down here a is equal to zero B is equal to R and then down here at the bottom this part this is the mass and we know that the mass is equal to Rho times the area now if this was in irregular shape we would integrate to find the area but we can easily find the area of this because it's just half a circle so we can write down here that the area of this is half of pi R squared now we also need the formula for the outline or the where the lamina is bounded here so we're going to start with the area of a circle so x squared plus y squared is r squared if we rearrange that we'll get y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared now because we haven't got plus or minus here this 
equation here is only going to give us half of the height of this elemental strip. And in this part, we want the area of this elemental strip. So it's going to be this delta x, so x dx, times by the height of this elemental strip, which is going to be double what this is. So this y only gives you from 0 to y. Because this elemental strip now goes down to the bottom, we need to double this. Now that's going to be easier than putting plus or minus. We'll run into problems when we integrate. Yeah, so uh, we'll just write that down that the height of elemental strip is going to be equal to two lots of the square root of r squared minus x squared. So now we can take all of that information and put it into our, our formula. So an integration between limits of 0 and r, and then rho x times by y, and y is 2 square root r squared minus x squared dx all over. Now, we don't need to do integration because we know the area. Anytime you can work out the area, don't worry about using integration. And it's going to be rho times by half pi r squared. So half rho pi r squared. OK, so now we need to think about uh, what method we're going to use to integrate the top. And actually, it fits sort of standard pattern um, or reverse chain wall, you could call it. And it's this. If we want to integrate a function differentiated times by that function to the power n, then the way we can get it is by doing that uh, function to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now, to apply this standard pattern here, we need to make this look like the standard pattern. So we've got our function here to um, a power. And actually, I should write that to the power half. Actually, I can. let's do that down here. So let's do all of those steps here. So I'm going to take my row to the other side. And then here I'll have 2x. And then I'll write the um, square root thing as power half, like this. Now, this part here needs to look like this differentiated. Now, this is going to give me minus 2x. So this is where my k comes in. So we'll just rub this out here. I'll put a minus here. So then that's, that's now exactly um, f dash of x. And which means I need to put a minus over the other side to keep it all balanced. And this is going to be all over half rho pi r squared. So probably at this point, what I'll do is I'll cancel out the rows. And then for the top part, I can just apply um, this rule here. So then I will have minus. And then I want all of this to the power of 3 over 2, so to the power n plus 1, so r squared minus x squared to the power 3 over 2. Now that needs to be divided by 3 over 2, so where we divide by the n plus 1. Dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. I'll have minus 2 thirds here. And then I'll stick another set of brackets in because I need to then have limits of 0 and R. And all of that over um, a half pi R squared. So I'll now put my limits in. So at the top I'll have minus 2 thirds. And in brackets I'm going to have R squared when I substitute the R in. R squared minus R squared which is 0. 0 to the power of 3 over 2 which is the 0 minus and then i will have um, r squared minus zero squared so that's just r squared to the power of three over two so r squared to the power of three over two all over half pi r squared so we're now ready to sort of tidy this up and finish this off so 
r squared to the power of 3 over 2 is just r cubed. So the top, I'm going to have minus 2 thirds times by minus um, r cubed. So that just becomes 2 thirds r cubed. And the bottom, half pi r squared. And then we'll just tidy that up. And that leaves a 2 thirds divided by a half is 4 thirds. So we've got 4 thirds um, r, because they will cancel out r over pi, uh, which we can write like this. x bar is 4 r over 3 pi. Now this corresponds to the standard result for the center of mass of a, a sector or a semicircle. You can quote this directly unless a question like this asks you to find it or to prove it. So there will be our final answer. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, do the same thing again, but this time we are going to use the elemental triangle method. Right, so this elemental triangle method. So our diagram is going to look slightly different because we will have these elemental triangles, not strips. So let's draw our semicircle like this with an elemental triangle like this that has a center of mass at this point here. Right, and uh, this angle round to the elemental triangle is going to be theta. And I'm going to draw a bigger version of that triangle down here, like this. And I'm drawing where the edge of the circle is, like this. This is going to help in a moment. And the angle at the center here is going to be delta theta. And I want to see what happens as delta theta tends to zero. Now my center of mass is going to be at this point here. And we can use a standard result that says that that center of mass is going to be two thirds along this median line here. Because this length is R on both sides of the triangle, that distance is going to be two thirds R. Now, the other thing we're going to need is the position of the center of mass of this elemental triangle. And um, we'll need the area of this uh, thing in a moment. We'll do it in a moment. So the x distance of the center of mass is going to be this distance here. Um, as delta x tends to zero, this angle round to this median line is going to be theta. The length of that median line is 2 third r. So the distance of the center of mass of the element, elemental triangle is going to be 2 third r cos theta. So we'll just write that down. So elemental triangle center of mass is 2 third r cos theta. And then we want the elemental triangle area. So we can find its mass and the way we're going to do that is approximate it to the area of the sector. I said this would be useful. So we're going to be, say it's approximately the area of the sector. And that's going to be half R squared theta. And in this case, it's delta theta. So we want to find the sum of all of these uh, masses times their center of mass divided by the total mass. So as delta theta tends to zero, then that sum is going to become the integration d theta. Right, we're almost ready to go. So here's our formula to find center max in the x direction. We're going to need limits a and b. Now this time our elemental triangles swing round like this rather than go from left to right. So our limits are not going to be x values, they're going to be angles. So we can swing around this way uh, by pi over 2 and then swing around this way to negative pi over 2. So my limits are going to be a 
which is pi over, negative pi over 2, and b, which is pi over 2. Um, I need the area of this semicircle that's going to go down the bottom here, times it by rho to get its mass. So uh, whether it's radians or not, it's going to be half pi r squared. If you use half r squared theta, you'd get the same result because theta would be pi. And we have our area, which we can turn into uh, mass and our center of mass to put into the rest of the formula there. So x bar is going to equal between the limits of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 rho times by x times by the area so we get the mass so that's rho times by half pi r squared uh, delta theta or uh, which is going to become d theta at the end and then times by the center of mass so two third r cos theta and there's our uh, d theta all divided by the uh, total area which is just going to be half pi r squared and that gets times by rho as well so i'll write it as half um, rho pi r squared half rho pi r squared now i've got lots of constants at the top so the only thing that's going to get integrated is the cos theta that will become sine theta so i'll write my constants down so that will be uh, a half times by two thirds, which is a third. So I'll have one third rho r cubed. So my constants there, sine theta between the limits of pi over two and negative pi over two, all over half rho pi r squared. So if we work out this part here, sine of pi over two is one minus the sine of minus pi over 2 which is minus 1 so 1 minus minus 1 is 2 so at the top we'll have 2 thirds rho pi oh sorry rho r cubed over a half rho pi r squared and if we simplify it and cancel it down 2 thirds divided by a half is 4 thirds and then we'll have r over pi so we get the same result as before which is 4r over 3 pi using this elemental triangle method example four what we need to do it says we've got a diagram that shows a uniform lam lamina occupying a shaded area bounded by the curve with equation y equals the square root of x so that is the top curve um, and the straight line with equation y equals half x that's the bottom line there find the coordinates of the center of mass of the lamina now we could find the mass and the center of mass um, of sort of this shape here which would be sort of the upper part so all of this and then subtract the um uh, or find the mass and the center of mass of that triangle under, underneath so that would be sort of this part here and then use that to find the mass and the center of mass of the remaining section here um, but that's that's going to take quite a lot of work to do we can simplify it by using the following formula and the advantage of doing this is we actually subtract the functions first put them into the formula and then we can quite easily work out x bar and y bar so the only difference is if I highlight it in the previous formula this just had y here so now we've got one function minus the other and f of x is the <clears throat> function which is at the top so that's always going to be the top one so f of x and g of x which is always going to be the function which is at the bottom here so it must be that way around and the same with the bottom part here where we had uh, y we just replace it with the difference between the two functions uh, and again here in y bar so i'm guessing once we've actually 
worked out this mass we can just use the same value here we don't need to work it out again uh, the only difference is when we look at the top of how we find y bar you'll see that we square the functions before we subtract them okay right so let's begin to work through this so um, i'll just write down here what f of x is so f of x is um square root x or x to the power half and g of x the function at the bottom that's going to be a half x now we need limits so we need to know what the point of intersection of these two graphs is because we need to know uh, this coordinate here so we're going to solve um, that so that point of intersection is when f of x equals g of x so that's when um, square root of x or x to the power half equals a half x then we'll square both sides so we'll have x equals a quarter x squared um, we'll bring um, them both to both the same side and we'll times by four i think so we've got four x equals x squared and then from there we'll have x squared minus 4x equals zero that factorizes nicely to give me x outside of brackets and x minus four so that means that these two curves intersect at x equals zero and x equals four so uh, the x equals zero is this point down here so this limit is going to be four so I'll just highlight that it's going to be the x equals 4 that I'm going to use as my upper limit and the lower limit will be 0. Right, so we'll start by working out center of mass in the x direction. So that's going to be integral between 0 and 4. And we have rho times by x. Now times by uh, f of x minus g of x. So that's going to be x to the power of a half minus half x dx and then for the bottom part for the area or the mass again between 0 4 and then rho and x to the power half minus a half x dx so if we um, expand the brackets from the top then we'll have uh, x to the power of 3 over 2 minus a half x squared and that we will integrate in a moment and then the bottom part we can integrate that straight away and that will give us rho times by uh, x to the power half integrated will be um, x to the power 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 so that's 2 thirds x to the power 3 over 2 and then minus x squared and we divide it by 2 so minus a quarter x squared and that's between limits of 0 and 4. Now we'll yeah, integrate the top so that's going to be rho times by so x to the power 3 over 2 becomes 5 over 2 so that's 2 fifths x to the power 5 over 2 and then minus that's going to become x cubed and we divide by three so that becomes minus one six x cubed between the limits of zero and four we can uh, work out the bottom and we'll have rho times by now uh, we only really need to put the four in because putting a zero in it's going to be zero but i will put minus zero uh, when we that work that out so yeah putting four into this uh, works out to be four thirds and then when we stick zero into it it just becomes zero so i can see that i'm, I'm just going to have four thirds row at the bottom and um, i'll do the same for the top and just like the bottom, putting a zero in is not going to make any difference. But when I substitute four into this, that's going to be 32 over 15. So I'll basically end up with 32 over 15 
row. Uh, and if I simplify that, I'll end up with x bar equal to 8 over 5. So I will write that up here x bar equals 8 over 5 because I'm going to have to clear this screen, create some space so that I can now work out the center of mass in the y direction. Now I've just left this bit of working here because remember this is going to be the mass of this shaded area and that's going to be the same for both so I don't need to work all of this out again so when I do my working I'm just going to write at the bottom four thirds row. Right so I've done that here so it's just about working out the top part which is this here so my functions need to be squared before I subtract so square and then subtract. Okay, so my limits are 0 and 4, and then I've got half row, and then in brackets I'm going to have um, f of x squared, so basically that's just going to be x. What I might do is actually write it out as squared, so it's the square root of x squared, just so you can see the working, and then minus um, g of x all squared, so a half x squared dx so i've just got to simplify that and work out the top part there okay so now at the top i'll have a half row and then i can see that the uh, x to the power half squared is just x and then uh, minus a half or oh, sorry a half x all squared that's going to give me um, a quarter x squared dx all over four third row then integrating let's put my constant there half row is going to be a half x squared minus that's going to be x cubed divided by three so minus a 12th x cubed between my limits of zero and four all over the four third row and then we should get the final answer from this part. So again, putting a zero is not going to make any difference. Half row, it's going to be the four. So once we put four into this, that gives us eight over three. So eight over three minus zero. And then just the four third row at the bottom. Expanding the brackets. So um, a half times eight over three is going to be four over three. So you've got four over three row over four over three row. And that's just going to be one. OK, so there's my y bar. Let's put that here. So y bar equals one. And um, I'll write the final answer as a coordinate. So center of mass. is equal to 8 over 5 comma 1. Example 5, find the center of mass of a uniform lamina in the form of a sector of a circle, radius r, center o, which subtends an angle to alpha at o. So here's a diagram that represents what's given in the question. And uh, you'll remember that in this type of situation, we use the uh, fundamental triangle method. I call it fundamental triangle method rather than doing a fundamental strip. Now, why doesn't a fundamental strip work? Well, let's think about it. Um, if I were to do fundamental strips, so you know strips that sort of go uh, let's call one for example so i'd have strips like this okay um, and that's fine from here, this point here from the origin up to this point here yeah they're all going to be strips and they're bounded by the radii of this uh, sector but then the problem comes when we look at the fundamental strips over here because these fundamental strips are not bounded by the radius anymore. They're now bounded by 
the uh, arc of the sector or the arc of the circle. So these fundamental strips are going to be bounded by two different things. We would have to do one set of calculations for them fundamental strips in this part, let's say up to the triangle part here. So here that will be one type of calculation. And then we'd have to do another calculation for the fundamental strips bounded by the, the circumference of the circle here. And that's gonna make things quite complicated. So if we use the fundamental triangle method, that way we only uh, use one set of calculations and then we can work at the limit as those fundamental triangles as the angle in them tends to zero. So that's why we can't use the fundamental strips because we've got two types of things going on strips here. Okay, increasing underneath the radius here, that's fine. Then when we get to this point, the fundamental strips are gonna decrease under this curve. So we would need to do two sets of calculations. So here's one of these fundamental triangles uh, on my diagram. I'm just gonna draw a bigger version over here so we can see what measurements uh, we need. Right, so we're gonna have an angle in here that we're gonna call delta theta. And we're interested to see what happens as delta theta tends to zero. I can see that the lengths of these two sides here are going to be r. We're gonna need the mass of that. I'm also gonna need the center of mass of that. So I'm gonna mark that down. And normally on diagrams, when we've got a center of mass, we label it as g. And this center of mass is at a distance of two thirds from this vertex. So that distance is two third r. And what we want to know is what's the x coordinate of that center of mass. So if this is the x axis here, we want to know what is this coordinate and we can use trigonometry to do that. If we call uh, this angle here, so the angle that goes around to the center of mass of that fundamental triangle, if we call that theta, so we'll work these out in a moment. So, but the first thing we're going to do is to say, well, actually we don't need to work out the center of mass in the y direction. So we can say by symmetry, y bar equals zero. Now, before we um, go on and work this out, uh, I should have mentioned this before. Why is the center of mass two thirds from the vertex end here if this is a sector shape? Well, basically what we've, the assumption that we've made uh, that this is approximately the area of a triangle. So the reason we've got the center of mass there is because this shape, our sector is approximately a triangle and we know the formula for the area of, or we know the formula for the center of mass of a triangle, not a sector. So that's why we've got this here. Anyway, we're gonna go from first principles. So we're saying, right, I want the sum from what limit to what, what limit? Okay, well, my limits are gonna be how far round I swing my triangles round. And I'm going to swing them around from uh, an angle of negative alpha to alpha. And then I want to do the mass times the center of mass of each of these fundamental triangles. So the mass of each fundamental triangle is going to be rho times by its area. And because this angle is going to be in radians, so I should mention that, that um, alpha is in radians, which basically means that theta is in radians. Then we can use the formula to find the area of a sector, which is half r squared theta. So in this case, theta is delta theta. So the area of it is gonna be half r squared delta theta. So we have the mass, so the area times by rho, mass per unit area. So mass times by the center of mass. And this is where I'm gonna use 
trigonometry to work out the center of mass of each of these fundamental triangles. And what I've basically got here is a right angle triangle, an angle of theta here. So the length of this side here, the one that is adjacent to the angle theta is going to be uh, 2 third r cos theta. So that's the center of mass of each one of these fundamental triangles. So 2 third r hypotenuse times by the cosine of the angle cos theta. And then all of that needs to be divided by the total mass of this lamina. And again, that's rho times by the area of this and the area of this. Uh, since this angle here is two alpha, so it'll be half r squared two alpha. Okay, so now we can move on to an integration. So we'll just write down that as delta theta 10 to zero, the summation of all these uh, delta thetas is going to be the integral of d theta. Uh, so we'll write that down. So now we've got uh, an integration between limits of negative alpha to alpha. And uh, we'll try and simplify this as we go along. Right, so I'll put all my constants at the front. So I'm going to have a half here times by two thirds. So that's going to be a third. Then I've got another constant of rho. So what I'll do, I'll cross these out as I use them. So I don't end up writing down things twice. And then I've got r times by r squared. And that'll be r cubed. So that's still a constant as well. And the variable in this case um, is going to be theta. So now I'm going to have cos theta d theta. And at the bottom, um, well, the half and the two are going to cancel out. And that will leave rho, oops, black pen, rho r squared alpha. Right, so let's deal with this integration now. I've got all these constants here. The cos theta, when we integrate it, is going to become sine theta with limits of negative alpha to alpha all over rho r squared alpha. Then from there, we'll get uh, one third rho r cubed, and then it will be sine alpha minus sine minus alpha all over rho r squared alpha. Now, um, we can put these two bits together because remember sine minus alpha is the same as minus sine alpha. So we've got sine alpha minus minus sine alpha. So we'll get two sine alpha. So one third rho r cubed times by two sine alpha all over rho r squared alpha. So now I'll just simplify this down. So we'll have two thirds. My rows cancel out, the r squared cancel out, just leaving r. So I'll have r sine alpha over alpha. And that can be written as 2r sine alpha over 3 alpha. Now this is a standard result which you can use unless a question asks you to prove it like this to show um, and then we use this method from first principles to find the center of mass. If it doesn't ask you to do that, then just use the result. Just remember that alpha is in radians. Example six, find the center of mass of a uniform wire in the form of an arc of a circle, radius r and center o, which subs subtends an angle of two alpha at o. So this is similar to the last one, but this is not a solid lamina. 
this is just a piece of curved wire. So we'll start with a diagram. OK, so this diagram sort of represents what's going on here. And it's this blue line, this piece of wire here that we want to find the center of mass of. The two dotted lines are not part uh, of the wire. They are just showing the radius from the origin. And the way we're going to tackle this is we're basically going to divide this arc up into small sections. And we want to know the mass and the center of mass of each of these sections. So this looks similar to the uh, fundamental triangle method. Um, so again, these dotted lines don't represent the actual wire. But imagine that I separate the wire into these little sections like this, little curves. And I want to work out, well, what's the center of mass as um, the angle here tends to zero. So I'll just draw this little put in the diagram a little bit larger. So here's my little piece of the arc uh, that I've got here. I want to call this angle here delta theta. And I also want to call the angle between that shape and the x-axis theta. So we'll put theta here. Now, uh, hopefully you remember that when we did questions before on finding the center of mass of a framework, that we take the length of each piece of wire in that framework and we use that for its area. So I'll just write down the length is going to be equal to the area so we this because this angle is in radians that's just going to be r theta so r times by delta theta so the area is equal to um, r delta theta and then if we want to find the mass we just times that by rho so the mass of that wire is going to be rho r delta theta now the center of mass of um, a wire is going to be the center of that wire. Now, because this is going to be tending to zero, actually that distance isn't going to make any difference. So actually we could take the center of mass from here or here or any point, but this is tending to zero. So actually it will make it easier. Um, and we did this in the last example. If we said, right, OK, this is the center of mass here. And we can use trigonometry to work out what this x coordinate of the center of mass of this little piece of curved wire is. And since uh, this is going to be the radius here, that's r, and we got theta, this length here is going to be r cos theta. So I'll write down r cos theta. So I can now write down that the center of mass of one of these little elemental arcs here, center of mass is going to be r cos theta. Now, like the previous example, I don't need to work out the center of mass um, in the y direction. I'll put that as zero by symmetry. And now we're ready to write our summations. So x bar is going to be the sum um, of all of these little tiny arcs from a value of negative theta or, uh, or sorry from negative alpha to alpha because we're basically looking at arcs all the way around from here negative alpha all the way around to here and the sum of for each one of these its mass times its center of mass and its mass is going to be rho r uh, delta theta times by r cos theta and then we need to divide that by the total mass of this wire and its mass is going to be rho times by the length of the wire we use its length as uh, its area and that's going to be a length of r times by theta in this case theta is 2 alpha so r times by 2 alpha so now we can use this piece of information here to turn it into an integration. 
as delta x tends to zero, then we will now have an integration between limits of negative alpha to alpha of, and I'll put my constants in, so that's going to be rho times by r squared. So rho r squared, um, cross them out as I do them, times by cos alpha, sorry, cos theta, cos theta, d theta. And then the bottom just becomes 2 rho r alpha. All right, so now let's do our integration at the top. So I'll put my constants outside, so rho r squared, and then cos theta integrated becomes sine theta. That's between negative alpha and alpha, all over 2 rho r alpha. Now you'll remember from the last example, this becomes sine alpha minus sine minus alpha, and then the sine minus alpha becomes minus sine alpha. So you'll end up with sine alpha, basically plus sine alpha, so you've got two sine alpha. So we'll have two rho r squared sine alpha over two rho r alpha. Then the twos will cancel out, the rows will cancel out, this r will cancel out and just leave r here. So all we're left with is this result, which is r sine alpha over alpha. This is going to be our center of mass in the x direction. OK, again, this is a standard result which you can use unless a question states that you need to prove this result. And we'd use this method from first principles to do that. So you should now be able to do exercise 3a from pages 85 to 87 of the textbook. And here's just a, a recap of some of the important things that we need. So here's the formulas. Uh, if we want to find a center of mass uh, of uh, a, a lamina, just remember these bottom parts, they're the same thing. So once you've evaluated one, you, you've got it for the other one. Uh, and also remember if they're shapes which are easy, th these are things you can manually work out the area. You don't need to integrate, just write down the area. Uh, don't forget to times it by a row then to turn it into a mass. If we want to find the center of mass between two functions, f of x and g of x, where f of x is at the top and g of x is, is at the bottom. This is what we do to find x bar, y bar over here. Uh, on this part here, don't forget, you need to square the functions first before you subtract them. And then lastly, if you have like proof type questions, then use the first principles method. That, that will be where you either use a fundamental strip or what I call fundamental triangles. I'll put that in quotes. Um, but that's only for sectors. For everything else, use fundamental strips.